I'm Holly. And I'm Bridget. And this is Girls Next Level. (laughs) Welcome back to Girls Next Level, everybody. We have a very special guest with us today. We have the host of the Live From Bed podcast. You may have heard Bridget and I's episode on there. We have the host from the Live From Bed podcast, Jade Iveen. She grew up across the street from the mansion, so she truly is our girl next door. (laughs) Hi, thank you so much for having me. Thanks for coming. Yeah, we're so glad to have you. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. This is like my 12-year-old dream come true. Oh, that's <laughs> cool. This is the best. I'm so excited. So we first want to ask you, uh, just to get an idea of who you are, yeah. so what made you decide to start a podcast? What's it about? Yeah, so I, you know, I wanted to start a podcast years and years and years ago. And I think um, I was doing a lot of freelance work where I was, you know, interviewing people on red carpets. Mm -hmm. And I was so frustrated because I, you know, would interview people and my, you know, there'd be a specific like style of questions that I would have to ask. And most of the time it was like, what, what are you wearing? Who are you dating? You know, like, are you excited for this event? And I was like, I don't care about any of this. I want like the deep cuts. I'm notorious for not being able to like have small talk. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I want the deep cuts. I want to know like, what, what's your childhood trauma? You know, like what are the (laughs) things that you like can't really discuss on the red carpet? Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's really cool now that you don't have to, you know, wait for your big break for, a talk show or anything like you can just Uh start it yourself with a podcast as many people as we've discussed have done and I wanted to have my show be the antidote for all the people like me especially in my 20s who felt like I was doing life wrong I I wanted to make it an antidote for people who were just inundated with success stories and aspirational content and you know all the lucky breaks that people had and the education and things that were unattainable to some mm-hmm. people i wanted it to create like an oasis a safe haven from that live from bed is just kind of like the rebellion from all the aspirational content and stuff and stories that were fed. I love that. I think it's much needed. <laughs> yeah, you know, it really is. And so like, I was like, it's so great that I get to talk. I, I heal from it just as much as the mm-hmm. audience, you know. It's all the stuff that you think that you're alone in going through. And when you started interviewing people, even on the red carpets, was your background coming from more like a place of journalism yes. or entertainment? Yeah. No, I, I, and like, the thing is, is that it was always like a different company. Like, I, you know, I'll, I, that I would be interviewing for. And I just never felt like I did. I hated pushing someone else's agenda and mm-hmm. finding out things that I didn't really care about. Like those things are wonderful and great and serve a great purpose, but it just didn't fulfill me in the way yeah. that I needed it to. That totally makes you know? sense. Well, when you were talking about healing and stuff and doing the podcast, for the, we feel like th- that's very much this podcast, totally. too. <laughs> like, every time we're talking about things or bringing people on, we're kind of – we're talking about the good times, but we're also talking about some of the things that were traumatic yes. or the things that we haven't thought about or didn't think about in a certain way. Right. And now we find it just so healing. Completely. And it's also healing to reunite with people that you haven't seen in so long. Like you guys. Yes. Yeah. No, truly. <laughs> it is. It's really cool. I really love it. Well, as Holly mentioned, you grew up ne- like right yes. at the mansion gates, like right at the back gate. Yes. What was that like? I mean, what? Yeah, I mean, crazy. But, you know, I the first of all, when you say the back gate, I was always so confused when I would watch the show because everyone would come in from the front gate. <laughs> I don't even know where the front gate is because even when <laughs> oh we would come gosh. for like the parties, we'd go through the back gate. Yeah, and the streets are laid out weird in that area. Yeah, it's not straight line. Yeah. So I was like, wow, that that always confused me. (laughs) Um, But no, so it added... A lot, you know, a lot of color to my already very colorful childhood. It, you know, I have a lot of funny stories from just like my experience growing up across the street from you guys. Mm-hmm. Just, Can I interrupt you yes. really quick? Because I think before we even get into the stories, we should say how, who you are, and why you get to live. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, who are your parents? How yes. did you end up growing up there? Yes. Yeah, so um, my parents are Vicky and Jimmy Iovine. Um, my dad is um, was a founder of the record label Interscope Records and um, founded Beats Electronics, so like the headphones. Um, so yeah, we lived there from when I was five years old, and my dad actually still lives there. So not to like out where he lives, but he still lives there. <laughs> Dogs. So I'm like, don't come there. Um, yeah. So, you know, it was funny. Like I remember one time I was in first grade, 
and we had like silent reading time. My bedroom was the closest to the mansion, right? Because my bedroom was like on the outermost whatever corner. And we had silent reading time and I fell asleep while I was reading in class. And my teacher comes up to me. This is a story obviously that they told my parents and my parents told me. My teacher came up to me and she's like, Jade, what's wrong? Why did you fall asleep? And I was like, I looked at her and I said, the Playboy Mansion kept me up all night because the (laughs) the music was so loud coming from there. But obviously the teacher was like, what the hell is going on? Like, this is crazy. (laughs) Um, But it was like such an incredible experience growing, especially when like in your guys' era. Before that, it was was different. You know, it was Mm -hmm. like maybe a little... I don't know, quiet, not quieter, but just if I didn't have like a connection to it. When you guys yeah. were there, I was like, oh no, I'm a fan now. <laughs> um, but it was like weirdly, because I would go for the parties and stuff, mm-hmm. like it felt wholesome to me. And yeah. I know it had this underbelly, you know, as an adult, but for me, it was just like peacocks on our roof, like peacocks, like meowing <laughs> all day, every day. Um, and just like a lot of music and you guys had fireworks. So like yes. for, for, they were the only, uh, the only like a house in LA to have a permit. Mm-hmm. Right. So luckily being across the street, like I'd come over for the party and then I'd go home for the fireworks and I could watch them from like my backyard. That's so cool. That's yeah. one of my questions later. Could <laughs> yeah. you see the fireworks yes. in your house? I could. <laughs> yes. I definitely could. Okay. How old were you when you first went to the mansion? Got five, six. Like, yeah, I would go for the Easter parties. Do you guys remember those? Um, the the eggs were yes. so gorgeous. Like they were like the, you'd blow the gunk out. Yeah. Like you, uh, they're like hand blown. I think right. Uh-huh. Yeah, and then like hand year. painted. <laughs> yeah, they were stunning. So we kept like a basket of those in our house, and then like we'd go for the hunt. That's so funny because this is a question I have later too. I was like, yeah. what did you think about the eggs, and did you keep any of them? <laughs> <laughs> no, because it wasn't a traditional Easter egg hunt. Like there weren't like toys and candy in the eggs because they were like blown out but there was a competition that I won one year that's I amazing very, I was very excited and what, what was your prize I don't remember oh. I was trying to remember on the way here but I was like because you would win by your age group mm-hmm. yeah so I was so excited I was like the oldest in my age group so I definitely like cheated in that way and I think all my siblings like gave me their eggs because I just wanted to win. and it was the year that it was filmed Oh, so yeah. I was like, ah. or it was probably filmed more than once, but it was filmed, but I was yeah. like so excited. That's so cool. And it's amazing to win that hunt because people are competitive. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy. Even adults are like shoving people out of yeah. the way. It's but nuts. it's like a pretty, I mean, as far as Playboy goes and the Playboy Mansion, like it was pretty wholesome. In oh, a way. for like, sure. Yeah. It was all kids. Mm-hmm. Not all kids, but like there were a lot of kids. It was a very family friendly game. Yes. <laughs> and it's so weird. Like you're looking at the grotto and like, oh, how nice, you know, but it you don't realize like what it is. Mm-hmm. until you're older, you know? Older and at the Midsummer Night Dream yeah, Party. And then you're exactly. like, oh, the Grotto. Exactly. Like, I, was, I was like, why does my brother keep wanting to go to all these parties? You know, <laughs> he came to all the adults only ones. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, the Easter party was like the all the playmates and all of their kids. Mm-hmm. And we didn't mention who your mom is. Yes, yes. Oh, duh. Okay, so my mom, sorry, I didn't mention her before when I was talking about my parents. My mom is an author, but also was a centerfold and did a cover um, for Playboy. If you've seen like the iconic um, Playboy, like with the Playboy sunglasses Mm -hmm. and like the girl like sipping a straw, that's my mom. She was uh, Miss September 1979. That's such an iconic cover. It's one they still put on like t shirts. It's the best one. Everywhere on merch. I'm like, you got so so lucky. And is it true that your mom, she tried out for Playmate when they were doing the 25th anniversary Playmate mm-hmm. search, and she tried out because she was actually writing an article about it, right? Exactly. Yeah. So she was a lawyer or, like, becoming a lawyer, and she wanted to do some journalism and, like, you know, mm-hmm. do a, uh, an article about the 25th anniversary search, and they spotted her there, and they, like, her whole um, – spread was like about like Phi Beta Kappa, like, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. law school and like brains and beauty. That's so cool. Yeah. She was one of the top three finalists for 25th anniversary yes. Playmate. And yeah. that was a tough search. So she What was the one that you did? Like the 50th anniversary. 50th and I was like, I remember seeing that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's so crazy. Uh, so and that's where the twins came in, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? Yeah. My memory. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> great. Got it I studied there. up. <laughs> <laughs> what did your mom think? Like she'd already been affiliated with Playboy and now all of a sudden she's moving next door? Yeah. You know, like Hef actually gave a speech. I think you guys were there at her 50th birthday. Yes. Yeah. That was a great party. Yeah. That was really fun. I was like, 
like 10 or something. Um, <laughs> but no, it was very fun. And he he was like, like they were joking around how like she moved across the street from him. But she had like a different relationship because she didn't date him. Mm-hmm. So I think she didn't, she was kind of excused from a lot of the darkness. Yeah. She definitely saw it, like which we've talked about later in life. Um, but she was very close with like Sandra, mm-hmm. Theodore, who... Um, I think she's still Manzella. I don't know. Um, but yeah, she was very close with her. So And she had dated Hef. But so my mom was like, game, you know, yeah. to move there. She was like, it's, you know, it's fine. Yeah. I think she was excited, maybe. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's an amazing neighborhood. Yeah, <laughs> it is an amazing neighborhood. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's for sure. It's crazy. Well, you t- did she, um, how did she feel about when Secrets of Playboy came out? You know, I think she was like, she was not surprised. Um, I think she was always like, there's going to be an expose on this. There's got to be, you know. And I think she just feels lucky that she didn't have to experience a lot of the dark stuff. Yeah. Um, And it definitely, like, I was looking at the dates and I was like, those, like, really correspond with the dates that you were there. Um, But she really only has, like, fond memories, but definitely is very aware that all that other stuff happened you know she's like Mm -hmm. okay this is like a long time coming this was definitely there was some malpractice going on in there for sure sure. what were your thoughts when you saw it were you shocked or did you already kind of know it was fun to watch with my husband in a way because I was like oh my god this like that yeah I was at that party or like I know that person because like a lot of my mom's friends were from that time like Allison Reynolds and Mm -hmm. sis and all that Um, but when it came out for me, I was like, I really only knew and was obsessed with the girls next door from your guys's era, you know? And so I saw it as like, oh, Holly Bridget and Kendra's house, you know, like Mm -hmm. I didn't see it as, I didn't even think about sex if that's like, you know what I mean? I didn't even think like, like, I just had such a different perception of it. So when I saw it, I was like, I can't, it's kind of weird to know that you were not necessarily around, but that I was like there when all of that stuff was going on. And in hindsight, of course, I'm like a woman. I can fully understand how that would have gone on. Um, and like, duh. But I think when I was younger, I, it's just like looking back and thinking, wow, I was so naive to like what that really was. And then I'm like, as the, as I became the same age as you guys were like doing that, I was like, oh my God, this is actually you watch it in a new way, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. you're like, oh, wait, this guy, what is like, what's going on here? You know? So I thought, I mean, I thought it was un, you know, really unbelievable for everyone that came out and spoke so bravely about it. And I think it's necessary because it was so, it was built on women and like these incredibly strong, smart, dynamic women. And, but the figurehead was a man mm-hmm. who, you know, was up to a lot of, dark shit, you know, in some ways. So I think it was really, really incredible. And I, I loved watching it. Yeah, it was intense. I had nightmares after every episode I came bet. out. I watched and I was, I, I ugh, it was Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I loved watching it. Yeah. It feels weird to say that, you know, mm-hmm. but it was definitely like, oh my God, I remember that room. And oh, I can't believe that that went on there. Yeah. Or like, you know, you just view it in a different context. Once you understand that, um, I was definitely like, because it's so weird like I know no one listening can probably fully understand but when it's your neighbor in a way Mm -hmm. you and you're a kid you don't see it like that you know and then once I you know grew up and understood I was like oh okay that's what was going on there yeah I feel like even for me you know as an adult when I first started getting invited to the Sunday pool party yeah when you're in that layer of the onion where you're on like the intimate guest list you only see like the best of things totally like you like I would have never guessed back then that he could ever be anything but like the nicest guy ever. Completely. Yeah. Completely. Because, you know, and like I saw him on Easter and he'd go around. Hi, mm-hmm. how are you? know, the whole thing. I mean, we never like saw him outside of those things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I definitely, my eyes were opened to like a whole new reality, but that I was not surprised by. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I, I think, like, growing, I, just the sh- the propaganda, not the propaganda, but just, like, the way that it was displayed on the show, probably intentionally, was, like, this wholesome, all your friends and family are invited, like, they don't show or talk about the sexual part, aside from, like, that one time you guys went to New York or whatever. Yeah. I can give you the whole episode <laughs> rundown. No, but, like, I feel like it was, it was such an undertone that yeah, I sure. didn't understand. It felt like girl power, mm-hmm. you know, which it was, but with this, you know 
yeah, other side. For sure. I think a lot of people will be able to relate to that because so many people, especially the female audience, their first real interest in Playboy was our show. Totally. And I feel like they all feel the same way too. Like they didn't see it that way. They saw it as girl power. They mm-hmm. thought it as fun. And as Holly puts it, very sanitized. Yes, mm-hmm. it was very yeah, sanitized. Totally. <laughs> like I, for my 12th birthday, sis, like uh, someone that we both know, she gave me a signed, um, a signed version of your uh, – cover like yeah. the three of your cover like mm-hmm. that you guys had all signed like I was like oh this is like this is meant for me you yeah. know what I mean I didn't think it was meant for like men I was like oh no I love this like because so I love yeah. these girls so it was just a totally different um like I grew up in that era like I was 12 I think when the show came out so mm-hmm. it was like that's when I really thought about Playboy and I was like oh that just means like Holly Bridget and Kendra like, yeah. I didn't think of him. You know what I mean? If, and I know that's so weird. Oh, he's replaceable. Yeah, I know. Exactly. <laughs> and I thought of, like, my mom, and I was like, she had a good experience, you know. Yeah. Totally. Did you um, – were you good friends with Marston and Cooper? No, I didn't know them at all. My si- older siblings knew them. Oh. But they lived in the house right next door. Yeah. Right? So with um, – what's her name? Uh, what's his ex-wife's name? Kimberly. Kim- did, did Kimberly live there? Mm-hmm. as well okay yeah. yeah so that so I don't think a lot of people know that that house I mean p- probably people listening to this but know that that house was right next door mm-hmm. and like that yeah so I didn't I didn't know them all that well but that must have been a trip for them growing up right next door to that like did they come over a lot yeah the gate in between was, had a door that was supposed to be open all the time okay so I think they snuck into parties they weren't supposed to be in right like that's what Marston said and yeah. things right. like that which yeah. sounds so fun yeah right <laughs> it's totally did you go to the 4th of July party of course yes and I was like uh, the slide was all I yes. could remember that was my favorite party it's the, the best sl- thing it was the best it was real it was so like that party is so fun and um yeah I, I would come and I would bring my friends and we'd go down the slide and just like it felt like a girl, like a girl party, a girl mm-hmm. fet, which it was. It was like a lot of naked women. But I don't know. I ne- It's so weird. I just don't think I either didn't see it or like maybe like the clothes came off later or something. I don't I just don't remember it being like this adults only party, you know? Well, I think 4th of July, the kids can come, right? Yeah, for yeah. sure. And I, ca- I can see that perception, too, because there was almost something, like, even though, like I said, when I started going, I was an adult, there was almost something that felt corporate mm-hmm. and safe about it. Totally. Like, this is the safe adult brand. Yeah. And nothing bad could ever happen to you here. Mm-hmm. And everybody looks out for each other here. And it's sexy, but it's not gross. Right. Yeah, no, it didn't feel, and I just, like, never really thought, you know, like, the, your guys' relationship with Hef was a part of the show, but I just, it didn't, like, compute that you guys were dating him. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like, were you guys, did you guys have rules or certain things that, like, you were and, like, weren't allowed to say at those parties, like, when you would have talked to the people there? You know, I always was very aware of the kinds of things he would want me to say. Right. And so everything was all positive. Right. You know, we're all very much in love. No, I don't mind sharing my boyfriend. I mean, I'd like it to be just us one day. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, yes, just yes. kind of keeping it positive. There weren't like explicit rules. Mm-hmm. I think when I first joined the group, the seven girlfriends just weren't expected to talk publicly very much right seven girlfriends when mm-hmm. you first, that's so yeah. crazy yeah like when I look at the pictures like from even before you guys existed like no one knows who any of those people are yeah. like it you guys just changed the whole thing so yeah when I was like 12 me and my friends like my friends would come over we'd TiVo all your episodes <laughs> and just watch you know TiVo back in the day uh-huh. yeah and just watch them religiously because it was like you guys were like icons you know what I mean like you guys were like (laughs) huge part no truly I like I loved it so yeah to see like you know secrets of playboy and everything I definitely knew like what had gone on with Sandra and you know everything like Mm -hmm. that but I feel like it's important to show that this brand that was built again like I said off of women was built off of women you know also like on, on the backs of women like who really had to sacrifice a lot and who like you know were treated not great. Yeah, absolutely. Like people always love to like point at me and be like, shut the fuck up. Like you wouldn't be anywhere without him. And I'm like, he wouldn't be anywhere without a photo of Marilyn Monroe that he bought and published without her right. consent. Right. Like it's it so goes crazy. both ways. Yeah. You know? No, that's so crazy. And I think that Secrets of Playboy, the second season, talked a lot about that. Mm-hmm. Like about all the women who, you know, 
who were part of this and built this, but then they had the repercussions from it. Oh, yeah. Big time. Yeah, like people would always ask me, like or still do to this day when I tell them that that's my mom on mm-hmm. the, their Playboy cover that's on their coffee table or whatever. <laughs> Um, they're like, oh my God, was that humiliating growing up? And I even saw someone like compare it to OnlyFans. And I was like, <laughs> no, 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 no. I was like, this was chic back then. Like yeah. this was very cool. So like, prestigious. Yes. And, and like, like, I don't know. My friends, like, I remember like one time when I was in sixth grade, maybe someone found like, I, I don't, I want to say like a baseball card of like the cover. I don't know. Like found something that was, my, had my mom's mm-hmm. like centerfold on it. Um, or shoot. And I, I was like, I, I don't remember that being like a traumatizing embarrassment at all. I think I was like yeah. proud of it mm-hmm. in a weird way. Maybe it's just the way my mom spun it. But I was like very, because it was, it was a prestigious brand. Like it wasn't, yeah. I was not OnlyFans. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think those things are comparable. Right. You know? No, I don't. Think not that, that OnlyFans is terrible at all, no. yeah. but I'm just, you know, it just was different. I yeah, was never sure. really like embarrassed by it. Yeah. I think growing up in LA too, there's so totally. many. People just understand the entertainment industry a little bit. and completely. But I think what's getting lost and what's going to continue to get lost is how prestigious it was Mm -hmm. and how people were, like, Mm -hmm. dying to be part of that magazine. Totally. Whether it's coming to the parties or being in it or meeting half, any of that. People were – it was very prestigious. And people wanted to be a part of that world in so many different ways. Totally. And it was, like, a stamp of approval, like, of, like, you're beautiful and whatever. Yeah. And I feel like there's nothing really comparable to that anymore and may not – ever be again and so I think that's going to get lost Mm -hmm. well that's why I think Mm -hmm. like I loved your show maybe like subconsciously so much is because this it was like a how do I put this like sexuality was so like punished at that time and I feel like you guys you you got to see so many dimensions of your personality probably not all but I just felt like it was like a celebration of sexuality Mm -hmm. and like it was finally okay for women to like own their sexiness and I don't know that's like that's always how I viewed it I want to go back to the the parties again the Easter party you said that you only use the back gate yes did you like get all dressed up oh my god <laughs> like my Sunday best yes like, yeah. like I was going to church but I was going to the mansion yeah no it was like it was part of our routine because we would have we would have an Easter party as well mm-hmm. but so we would walk over me and all my siblings I'm one of four kids um and we'd walk over and it just felt like just like any of you, like at your neighbor's house. Like yeah. I was just like, oh, okay. You know, like we didn't really borrow milk. We did borrow Halloween <laughs> costumes from you. Yeah, we're going to get know? to that for sure. <laughs> yes. Um, did you know a lot of the other kids when you got there? Uh, yeah. Like I grew up with like I, um, Taylor and Katie that are Sandra's kids and Ray and Lorraine Nicholson. Like they would always be there. It was like a gaggle of us that was just like consistently there. <laughs> a little group of us. That's so cool. Playboy offspring. <laughs> what was your favorite part of it? Oh, my God. I mean, it was just so the, – the petting zoo was so great. Mm-hmm. Like, I loved going to see the monkeys and all of – like, I loved seeing the animals. Um, I loved the hunt. I loved the prospect of getting – of winning and getting a prize. I just thought it was, like, this – it's this huge – place it's like such a spectacle it's like so crazy to see it's this larger than life like especially when you're a child like place and yeah it was just fun it really was there wasn't like you could take that same party and other than the grandiosity of it like you can take that party and put it at someone else's you know what I mean it was yeah. wholesome it really mm-hmm. was like I can't emphasize that enough it felt like this party's meant for kids yeah like I didn't feel like I was anywhere I wasn't supposed to be yeah, yeah for you sure. know? did you guys have animals at your house too yes yeah. Well, no. Well, okay. So for Easter, we'd have like a petting zoo, but we didn't have like the peacocks and all of that. We didn't have like, what are they called? I don't know. Like any of those fancy animals. Um, we had dogs, but no. And other than that, we just had the sounds of your guys' animals. Yeah. <laughs> I say sounds. your guys'. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. The monkeys and the, the peacocks. Mon- yes. And the- <laughs> all of it. And they would fly over to your yard too. Yes. And it was, but it's like crazy. Like I still go over there and at 5 p.m. you hear the meows. Mm, like they so start, yeah. you know, like I, those are just like, the, I like it just paints such a, or it just like takes me back to like my childhood so much hearing that sound. <laughs> For sure. Did you Did, go to the Midsummer Night's I was just going to say. <laughs> I never went. <gasps> really? I never went because it was like by the time I was old enough. I don't know. I feel like maybe there wasn't one or you guys were gone and I was like, okay, what's the point? Um, But no, I was always too young, I Mm -hmm. feel like. And I always – but, you know, my siblings – and I went one year. My siblings would always go to the um, Halloween parties because those were like – 
crazy. I don't think anyone knows what those, um, what are they called? Like mazes? Like Yeah, the yeah. haunted house. The haunted house was like. So every year it was like a theme, mm-hmm. right? And like I remember the ring theme. Like it was like the, it was like based on like a movie sometimes. Yeah. And it was the most intricate, immersive, <laughs> horrifying haunted house. It like really ever. was. It was crazy. Like, you guys went, like, or they went, whoever, all out for those events. It was better than Halloween Horror Night. Oh, my God, (laughs) yes. Like, it was crazy. It was so good. Yeah, so good. The (laughs) the Halloween party, I know the Midsummer's party is, like, the most iconic and the most beautiful, but the Halloween party is. Which one? Was that your favorite? Yeah. Yeah. What's your favorite? That's where it was. Fourth of July. Because that one for me was the only one where I was allowed to walk around and really talk to people. I didn't have to be like stuck at the table the whole time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I love the slip and slides. Yeah. (laughs) Me too. Yeah. Me too. Me too. (laughs) So you kind of already touched on this, but we were wondering like, what was it like when the big parties were happening to be a neighbor? Like you talked about the sound of the music. Mm -hmm. So you definitely could hear all the music coming. Yeah. But my, my room was also right above my dad's like studio studio so that noise was like happening every day and my oh. my dad would just like play whoever's record and like listen to like the songs over and over and over again so I always like joke my pro- joke with my producer because I'm like the chandelier in my room would shake which I understand is weird to have a chandelier in your bedroom as a mm-hmm. child I, I understand that but it was like there was music at all times so I feel like that neighborhood is kind of filled with other people who are in the industry or like that get it to an mm-hmm. extent like and I feel like when did when did half buy that house 71 yeah so been there probably longer than most of the neighbors exactly there so I think was got away with it all. one little old lady who lived on a corner like right over by where the game house was and oh every no single way. party she would send threats and bother Mary with all these phone She's calls the wrong, and just wrong never neighbor. got used to it <laughs> but you guys were next to the country club too right mm-hmm. yeah yeah no like not a, no one even ever dreams of like like noise is just commonplace I feel I feel like now maybe it's a little more calm but it's definitely it's weird to drive past the gate and like see that there's nothing you know it's not the Playboy Mansion anymore I know it's bizarre have you seen the photos of like all the aerial photos that they'll publish every once in a while like TMZ or Daily Mail will pop up with a story of like look at what they're doing to the Playboy Mansion and it's all like scaffolding the whole thing's being like completely remodeled oh it's like being made to be like modern or something parts of it they built like little modern like additions to it you can tell because I'm like an overhead yes. stalker I guess <laughs> somebody else published it I wasn't yeah. I wasn't doing it but and like the grotto's all drained right now like oh everything's God. there's no front lawn Completely it's a parking redone. lot what? Yeah. like it's just it you, when I'm looking at the pictures like I can barely tell which is the front of the mansion which is the back no of the mansion way. it's just so hard to tell what's going on I so googled much. it yesterday and was like like you said like I kind of had to reorient myself like okay what part is the redwood forest yeah what yeah part? what what did they do with all the animals those are still there, apparently. Oh, yeah, really? they still have the zoo permit and wow. all that's going on. And you can see, like, when you look at the Google Earth, there's still like the cages and stuff. What was your monkey's name? Coco. Is she still there? I don't know because I'm like on. Everybody hates me, so nobody <laughs> communicates on the with me. <laughs> but I, w- I would bet that Coco's probably not alive anymore because yeah. I think she was old when they got her, right. and she was in poor health because her previous owner had just fed her junk food all the time. That's oh. why she had a pot belly. <laughs> oh, god, so crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I like wonder. I'm like very curious. We need to do like an expose of what happened to all these animals. No, I'm, I'm down for that. I'm very yeah. curious. <laughs> Was there a lot of traffic nightmare when the parties were going on? You know, not really. I think just because it's like kind of on this off street and the street is so wide. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. Like, maybe the, I don't know if that's intentional, just like making it, you know. Um, like perfect for parties. It really wasn't bad. Maybe it was bad by the front. By the, the front, back? it for sure was. Yeah. So I didn't know if that translated to the back. Well, part. the back is where like all the VIP like cars would mm-hmm. wait, like on that side. So no, it was never terrible. The worst part of that neighborhood is the Star Tour. Star, like yeah, you know, like the, that's <laughs> the, that is the traffic. Like that's where people are just so slow. Mm-hmm. That always like, and they're still there. It really blows my mind. That's so funny. I know. <laughs> um, were there ever any like drunk people? People that like wandered onto your guys's property or tried to, you know, or- maybe my parents. No, I don't think so. I really because like the, also everyone's behind a gate and every, yeah. everything is so like guarded and everything. Um, 
but no, I don't recall any drunk people coming up to our house. <laughs> that, that doesn't mean it didn't happen. It was yeah. probably like my drunk brother and his friends like coming <laughs> home. Um, did your parents go to the parties? Yeah. Yeah, they you know they didn't do, go to like midsummer like they they went to the new uh, to New Year's to um 4th of July and Easter. And then I don't think they went to much else. I don't think yeah, they weren't like on the like circuit. You know what I mean? They didn't go to like everything. Yeah. They were doing their own Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of that, we went to some parties at your Did guys' you? house. Yeah. I know there was a Christmas party we went to. Mm-hmm. And like we were saying earlier, your mom's 50th birthday yeah. we went to. But in fact, I just found um, a photo. I put it on my phone. I'll have to show you at the end. Um, that we took at your house. No way. With like Santa. No way. Oh, my God. So it was Santa inside, right? That I, was like, I think so. I remember because, of course, I was like, are they coming? Are they coming? Like, I was so <laughs> obsessed with you guys. I feel like I remember that exact party that you guys came to. And then I remember there was a party, um, and it might have been your mom's birthday, but it could have been a charity event too. But like, um, there's all these performances. So, and like, I remember Bon Jovi was there, and I I'm think like, that was oh. the 50th birthday. Party, was it mom's 50th birthday? Yeah, there were so many celebrities, and they were all like lined up by the stage, and then they had the Pussycat Dolls coming yes. right before they were uh, as they were becoming a singing group. Yeah, that was which so is cool. so cr- what a moment in time. Yeah, that it was. really was. It was like Earth, Wind, and Fire. And- yes. <laughs> I I remember Hef gave a speech, but I don't remember, like, what was in that speech. Yeah. I don't either. There was just so much going on. Yeah, it was was always. Yeah, you guys threw amazing parties. I met Taylor Swift at your house once. You did? my cherished memory. Oh, my God. It was at a Christmas party when you guys had, like, all the snow. Oh, yes. I was very – oh, my God. I was very upset that year because I was in college, and my sister was there. And I'm like, I wish I met Taylor Swift at my house Um, because I wasn't (laughs) there. And so my sister and she had the same birthday, and it was on their birthday, and I was just – I had FOMO. And yeah, you guys were definitely. there. Like, I, I really missed out. Oh. Yeah, it was so cool. I brought my daughter. She was little. And oh. when I met Taylor, she was like, what a beautiful child. Oh. So I tell her that story all the time because now she's a Taylor Swift fan. Oh, my God. And then what she goes and, like, thing. repeats it to the kids at camp. And the kids at camp are like, your mom's lying. She's just trying to make you feel good about yourself. No, I oh. that resonates with me. I'm like, I understand having a weird childhood and sounding yeah. like you're making a lot of it up. Like, uh, <laughs> we have colorful childhoods. You know? <laughs> Uh, did you guys ever come to the buffet dinners and movies? And no, we never did. Hmm. No, we never did for some reason. But those always looked like fun. I feel like maybe they weren't. Me- they did kids go to those? Not really. Like sometimes, every once in a while. Yeah. But it was usually just like an inner circle of adults. Kind yeah. Of. Yeah. No, those looked fun. We. I like. I definitely. When you guys were on, like on TV, I was like kicking my parents. I was like, come on, can we go to like more of their stuff? Like, let's go. I was like so into it. Because I feel like you would have been invited. For yeah, sure. For sure. For sure. I think they there wanted, was like if there was interest in, in coming, they would have been totally. have would have been like, oh, of course. Totally. No, I think they were like, we have four crazy kids. Like we'll <laughs> they're them. busy. Yeah, enough. we'll keep them home. <laughs> <laughs> um did you know the staff very well? No, I didn't. I didn't. I really I do like when did, did all of them work there until, like, the end for the most part? Like, a lot of them did. Yeah. I think the staff got pared down quite a bit toward okay. the end. Mm-hmm. But there were a few that were there right up to the end. I mean, it just must have taken a village. Like, it must have mm-hmm. been, been so many people, like, they're, like to tend to that entire property. I can't even imagine. Housekeepers, oh. groundskeepers, like, butlers, no, kitchen and that's, staff. Yeah, like, that's a way I also grow, grew up and, like, now I realize how weird that is to, like, always have people in your house. Mm-hmm. It's very bizarre. Like, there's yeah. always someone, like, working on something or doing something. And now I, like, am in my house and I'm like, it's so quiet in exactly. here. And I'm like, there aren't 27,000 people in the house. Yeah. Yeah, no, there was always people. And it's a, it's a weird, like, you don't have privacy, mm-hmm. you know? Like, you guys probably never had privacy. Literally never. Yeah. No, because I had shared a room with Hef, and there were just always people throughout the day that would walk, and they'd come in the back door where, like, my area of the room was, and they would just constantly be, like, changing things on his calendar and wouldn't even knock, just walk right, right in. And I'm just like, oh, change in. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and for me, um, Holly had the least amount of privacy. Yeah. But for me, I had to share a room for the longest time. Right. And then when I finally got it to myself, then I had some privacy. Yeah. But but yeah, for the longest time, it was just sort of like community room. Well, if you like wanted to spend a whole day in your bed, let's say, like just like – were you allowed to do that? Like just I alone in your room for a whole day? 
I don't know if I could have stayed alone. I think yeah. people would have popped in and out yeah. here and there, <laughs> yeah. but I could have definitely. Yeah. Okay. I think I would have had to be deathly ill to right. get away with that. Right. Deathly <laughs> ill. <laughs> but it also depends on what day. Like if it's a night we were supposed to go out or right. a buffet dinner, right. then no. Right. Hef would be like knocking and be like, what are you doing? Mm. Get out of bed. Let's, <laughs> let's go. Totally. But if it were a day that we didn't have something going on, then I probably could get away with that. Yeah. I don't ever remember that happening. I don't ever remember like staying in bed all day one day. Oh my God. Like judging by the, uh, the name of my podcast, I'd be like dying to do that. Like I'm just like, okay, I, I, you know, I need to understand. Could you lay in bed all day if you wanted to? Bed rot days are a necessity. Oh my <laughs> God. Are they a necessity? The best. Um, did you feel like the mansion was kind of like a family? It felt that way. From, like, from the outside perspective, it definitely felt that way. I think like I would bring it up to, like I'd say, you know, I, I would say what I thought the mansion was like to my parents and they were definitely like, okay, that's a different perception yeah. of like <laughs> what it actually is. But it felt at the time so, from an outside perspective again, so wholesome. Mm -hmm. It really did. Like it felt like what you saw on TV is what you saw in real life. Um, and you guys were so warm and like welcoming and so like fun. And it just felt like he was a side character. You know what I mean? It felt like it was your guys' house and it was like, oh, fun. It's like a slumber party every night. And like, you know, I just didn't think of it, you know, in that other way. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it felt like, you know, like when we would see you guys come to our parties or when we'd come to yours, it was like, hey, you know, those are the Smiths, but those are, you know, like those yeah. are the mansion family. Yeah. It felt like that. Yeah. Because you guys were like just our next door neighbors, the girls next door. Yeah. Really. So I know that you're looking at it kind of from the outside perspective, but did you did you ever get a sense that there were people up there for the wrong reasons or people that were taking advantage of mm. Hef or the mansion or the situation? You know, I don't – I think maybe as I got a little older, I was like, okay, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, a little more curious about like – who owned what and like who's able like just just more so like I just saw the holes in like what I had my in like my childhood perspective of it. I think I definitely was like, you know, wondering, you know, how like especially with the, the when when you guys even would have them on the show, but like the older generation mm -hmm. and I there I felt a little darkness I yeah. think through that and also like just the way that it looked it kind of it's a very old-fashioned house mm -hmm. like I don't even know what style it would be called. gothic like, tutor go yeah, yeah. <laughs> gothic I'm like so glad you have all the information yeah it's like it was like this house that looked like huh like people can't actually live here mm -hmm. you know it felt like a castle. set it's yeah like a castle. <laughs> yeah but no I think for me I just was like yeah, because pe people at the time, the mansion was the place to be. Like, people wanted to be there. Every celebrity was there for all of the parties. It was like, that's where, you know, the it girls and, like, the fa most famous people were all there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, th I think that's all I really thought about it. We like, left it in um, 2009. Were you up there after that much? No. I think, like, after you guys left, it took a real turn. Um, like I remember like hearing about like he little things like who he was dating now mm -hmm. and you know, whatever. But I think it was, it kind of was like silence after you guys left. Like there really was an absence. Um, cause like that, at that, by that point I was in ninth grade, you know, I was like still right across the street mm -hmm. and I think I'd go over maybe just, or no, I think I just watched the, um, fireworks, but no, there really, it felt like there were like two years of transition, Oh, yeah. You know, like where there wasn't like this dynamic like group of people. It was like they they were trying to like find new girls to like mm -hmm. take in like the show was still on, but it wasn't what it was, you know, like mm -hmm. by the end, I feel like it was. Yeah, it, it was the kind of like dead silence. I, well, like that's how I remember it. Yeah. When was the last time you were at the mansion? Probably 08, like or 09, I think 2009. Yeah, it's been a while. Mm -hmm. It's been a while since I walked up that ramp and then there's the bunnies on the left side. I yeah. remember it vividly. Yeah, the bunnies right next to security. Yes. That was like a just extra cage for bunnies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah those are the extra bunnies. Yeah. <laughs> 2009, that's just about the last time I was there. Like I think mm -hmm. I went up a couple times after that to film things, yeah. but not much. Yeah, like by the end of the your guys' show, were you guys really living there? 
I broke it off with Hef in like August of 2008 and I stayed a couple more months in a different bedroom just to kind of finish up a few scenes. Right. But it was only a handful of scenes. It was like my goodbye to Bridget, my goodbye to Hef. Right. And they didn't like, like did they want to film your goodbye to Hef? Like your actual breaking it up with him? No, they kept it. It was a very staged scene. Okay. They had me leaving and saying, I'm going to Vegas. And the right. way the producer explained that to me was the producer didn't want me to leave. And he was like, well, you know, you can come back anytime. Yeah. This way we're just leaving the door open. But I had no intention of coming back, no interest whatsoever. Right. And I was, I kind of resented that they wanted to do the scene that way, but. Yeah. No, it was, was open-ended. I yeah. remember that. Well, and they had us film things, but then they put it on season six, right? Well, they bumped a couple of the season five episodes to season six on the DVD. Yeah. But for season six, it was more like stuff like when they came to Vegas to see my show and like when oh we my the God. birthday show. That was weird. Shower for Kendra. Yeah. Wasn't that bizarre? I remember that. Like, but they kind of left you on open-ended too because they were like, she's going to go do sexiest beaches mm -hmm. and then she's going to come back or like right. theoretically. But yeah, like that last season was bizarre it was it's, weird it's weird to us too right and we can't wait till we get to it because we want to really break it down because even we're like wait how did that even go yeah. and like like how did they get yeah it just it definitely took a turn yeah and when Bridget left I think it was kind of a little bit open-ended like you knew you wanted to move on but I don't think you were ready to leave right then I wasn't right. no I definitely um yeah I was shooting the show but I had all my stuff still there and I was right. planning on staying for at least a few more months and then I came back and Kendra was packing and Holly was gone and the twins were there and like weird shit was happening, yeah. like really weird shit. And I was like, oh no, I called my sister and my parents. And I was like, can you guys help me pack yeah, up? Like I'm out. Yeah, yeah. I got to I got to get out of here. No, I feel like it was a totally different thing. And I think like, you know, no shade to the whoever the new girlfriends were. It was like the twins. And I don't know when Crystal came in, but it was just not... I, there wasn't that whatever family I thought existed that didn't exist anymore mm -hmm. there. Like, I feel like I, I almost want to say they didn't have parties, but I know they did. The parties changed. They started selling tickets to the parties. Oh, they weren't ick. private parties anymore. Right. And then everything got scaled down. Like even like the food buffets got yeah. really shabby and everything. So it was just a whole different crowd. And right around that time, it's when everybody got a smartphone with a camera. So mm -hmm. everybody's taking pictures. No celebrities wanted to go. It was just the parties right. were night and day after that. Yeah. No, I think like we stopped going after you guys left, I think for sure. <laughs> so the mansion wasn't your only famous neighbor, though. Do you right. know who some of your other neighbors were? Yes. So Aaron Spelling was across the street, but like a different like – you guys were across the street and then a different across the street, like yeah, diagonal. Yeah. Um, they were there. Who else was there at that time? I know the Gersh's were across the street from on that side or the Mancuso's. Who else was there? Did you ever go in the Spelling house? No. And that is, like, something I regret deeply. No, that house was, like, ominous at that. Like, I felt like no one ever left or came. Like, it was like the yeah. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It felt like no <laughs> one ever came in or out of that house. Yeah, I know what you, you mean. Know? It like, was just, like, known as, like, the biggest house with its own gift wrapping. Room. Yes. But nobody yeah. ever. I was like, I heard of the nine, bowl or nine swimming pools or, like, <laughs> six bowling alleys or whatever, but I never saw them. Yeah. I never saw them. The it's closest crazy. that we got is somebody dumped a whole bunch of rabbits down at the park, down the street. Yeah, at Homeby Park. Mm -hmm. Did you see they redid the whole park? No. Oh, my God. It's like this insane jungle gym now. It's like gorgeous. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Anyway. Well, they dumped all these rabbits, and uh, I got Holly, and we were trying to, like, capture all of them. And some of them were, like, in the flat. Probably we were, like, crawling through your guys' yeah. bushes, too. But we were trying to get all these rabbits, and one of them was in, like, the spelling bushes right out front. And we were, like, trying to coax it out. And get it and their security is like excuse me can I help you and we're yeah. like we're just trying to get these rabbits <laughs> oh it felt like a weird place but I wonder when did he die Aaron Spelling like gosh I don't know because it might have been like what, around yeah. that time I don't know it felt very dark like I don't know why or just like what makes me feel like that but just because like there was no one there Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is a great you comparison know I, mean? <laughs> I was like no one ever leaves or like goes yeah. in it was bizarre yeah. Uh, do you Did you have anything that you disliked about being a neighbor of the mansion? No. I thought it was so fun, and it was normal to me. You know, like, the, when I mm -hmm. when you got, like, I was five when we moved in. Yeah. So for me, it was just like, isn't everyone's neighbor, like, the playboy man? <laughs> you know, like, doesn't this happen all the time? To me, it was just like this grandpa 
who lived like across the street <laughs> and had like some lady friends that would yeah. come over sometimes. Like if that's what it felt like. But no, really like the – like I think people would say the noise, but the noise like didn't bother me because I am the youngest of four and like mm -hmm. also my dad would play crazy music like all the time. Um, so no, nothing. I mean, maybe the meowing of the peacocks or the one time a crane landed on our roof and pooped, but that was a complaint <laughs> of mine. Yeah. My parents had to deal with that, <laughs> but I loved it. Um, did you ever have any, like, see anything really crazy or have any crazy stories from over there? No, I think my favorite thing is just that my sister borrowed your peacock costume. Oh, we yes. have to talk about that. Yes. Yeah, your mom called me and said that Jessica wanted to borrow the yes. peacock outfit. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. I go, and you know, don't worry about like, I'll get it dry cleaned or whatever. She goes, no, I know a wonderful laundry. Oh, and she sent it back all perfect. And she sent cupcakes and a thank you card. And I just thought, this is a mom who has it all together and knows oh how to do God. everything. It reminds me of like Kris Jenner. Like I always call her mega mom. Yeah. She like knows how to do everything. Totally. She's like a businesswoman. She's like nice to people. She yes. like knows the recipe for the sauce. I sadly am not a mega mom. Oh, I want to be a mega mom so I bad. I, I wish. Is I your mom a mega mom? Oh, yeah, she is. <laughs> you know, she has her faults. Like, you know what I mean? Like that for sure. But yeah, no, she definitely was like Kris Jenner-esque. Yeah, like has it all dialed. Yes, 100%. <laughs> so yeah, my sister had a Halloween party. And I so I remember the fight very well between my mom and my sister about when she could wear that outfit. Mm -hmm. Because my sister, like after you guys came on the show, she's like, did you tell my version of the story? And I was like, I didn't remember at the time. But now I remember that she, my mom and her got in a fight because the, the costume was... Playboy, you know what I mean? It wasn't, yeah. it was made by Trashy Lingerie, right? Mm -hmm. But it yeah. was like sexy, yeah. you know, and she was in high school. She yeah. was like in 10th grade and my sister wanted to wear it to school and she's like, I'll wear pants under it, blah, blah, blah. My mom was like, absolutely not. So she wore it to like the after party or mm -hmm. whatever. But I remember she went over there and tried it on. Yeah. And it was like, she was so excited. Like, that was so <laughs> sweet of you to let a high schooler borrow it. Like, she could have torn it up. I, I'm <laughs> glad it came back in perfect condition. I'm no, kidding. somehow I knew. I had a good feeling about it. Yeah, you're oh, like, this is cute. Yeah. No, it's it, that's so funny. She was very into it. Aw. <laughs> I'm like, that's... It's such a fun story. Sugar. Yeah. I know. <laughs> some people... We wore our peacock costumes. Yes, but it was the real peacock feathers from the mansion, right? Yeah. I collected a bunch of them that had shed in the backyard. And God, what is Trashy Laundry doing without you guys? Before we run out of time, yeah. tell us about some of your favorite podcast episodes. Like if you have a new listener coming to your feed, yes. do you have any episodes off the top of your head that you would recommend? Go to this one, go to this one. Besides ours. No, your yeah, guys' is was one of my favorites. <laughs> Absolutely, for sure. That was so fun. Just being reunited like, yeah, right for now. Sure. Yeah, no, I, I think some of, like, some of the episodes that people loved the most were like the Paris Hilton episode. Um, the Gwen Stefani episode. I think people really liked my, I, I did an episode about like coming out of a depressed, like depressive mm -hmm. episode. A, I literally called it a depressive episode because <laughs> that's what it was. Um, and people really resonated with that. I, um, did an episode about an abortion that I had that people really resonated with. Um, so I would say any of those are good to start with. There's a, there's a hundred and something of them. So there's wow. plenty to choose from, but just get ready to commiserate and get comfy <laughs> and just, you know, feel like you're having like that conversation with that friend that you can't get on FaceTime because they're too busy. Yes. You I know? love that. <laughs> do you get nervous with celebrities like Gwen Stefani? Like if Gwen Stefani said, oh, I want to do your guys' podcast, I'd be like, oh, I'm so nervous. Like, yeah. do you get nervous or is it, are you used to so many celebrities in your life? I think I'm a little desensitized to it but my husband makes fun of me because like I truly get starstruck by like you got like reality stars you know what I mean like I'm a bravo freak also uh -huh. so I'm like I don't care about you know whoever I care about like Vicky Gunvalson who's like on the OC you know what I mean <laughs> I just I'm like more starstruck in that way but I just get more nervous because um it's a new, especially with the ones that I know well, it's like a new relationship to like interview someone. It's mm -hmm. a whole different thing. So I kind of get nervous before like every time I interview or record, mm -hmm. but you know, I hope, like maybe that gets easier after like 600 episodes. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's healthy to get a little bit nervous. Yeah. And I think that that energy helps the interview too. Yeah, I think so too. My, my dad always says, at least you'll stay awake. Yeah. I'm like, I'm so nervous. He's like, at least you won't fall asleep. Yeah. So, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. true. It's true. I'm like, okay, sure, I guess. <laughs> well, hopefully people aren't falling asleep. For yes, that. exactly. Don't <laughs> fall asleep. 
Thank awesome. you guys so much for having me. Yeah. Thanks for so me. Fun. Super fun. I loved it. Thank you. So fun catching up. So thank you so much for joining us this week. If you want more content, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash girlsnextlevel. And we will see you guys next week. Bye, guys. Bye. For more content, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash girlsnextlevel.